Life, Culture and Current Events from a Biblical Perspective. 2020 on Vision. It's Jeremy Camp, Christ in me. You're on Vision Christian Radio. It's Neil Johnson with you, the Wednesday edition of 2020. Hey, a new initiative to talk about today that's likely to be both controversial and a rallying point for people who are horrified by the open season on babies in the womb. Next year, expect a day on the calendar called Sanctity of Life Sunday. It's an initiative that seeks to resource churches and Christians all over Australia to lead a transformation of the culture into one which affirms the sanctity of life and supports national leaders publicly doing so. Well, Sanctity of Life Sunday would be a national day for God's people to bear witness that life is a sacred gift from God. It's a day that would focus on forgiveness and healing for past abortions, and to promote community resources supporting women facing an unplanned pregnancy. Let's talk about Sanctity of Life Sunday with our special guest, Dave Pello, who's the founder of the Church and State Summits and a avid pro-life advocate. Uh, Dave, a special welcome back to 2020. Thank you, Neil. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, Dave, some people will uh, cringe at the idea of a Sanctity of Life Sunday. Uh, Others will be just standing on their seat applauding and saying, why haven't we had a Sanctity of Life Sunday before? Uh, This is one of those things. It is controversial. For some people, it is divisive. But uh, we can't ignore the fact that we're created in the image and likeness of God. And that's the only way we can actually determine that humans have the value that we do. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a pretty exciting initiative, isn't it? Well, I empathize with the people who will cringe about it. Um, And... And that's actually probably the best evidence that this is necessary. The reason they're going to cringe is because they're worried about people that will be offended and hurt and the possibility for shame and condemnation on those people. And that's not an outcome that's desired at all. But what this does mean is that those people exist in our congregations and they need the ministry. They need the healing. They need the forgiveness that Jesus offers And that's why this is an important topic, because they're in our congregations and they may respond that way uh, if this isn't done sensitively and gently, because those are still raw wounds, perhaps decades later. And that's why we need a resource for churches to sensitively and uh, in full harmony with the spirit of the kingdom of God um, provide a ministry opportunity to do that. And a national day celebrating the sanctity of life is uh, is the perfect opportunity to do that without shame or condemnation. Interestingly, we could actually mentally picture some sort of a spectrum where people might be on this issue. And there are people outside of the church who are uh, pro-choice, uh, really pro-abortion, mm. uh, who'd be way down one end of the spectrum almost militantly Uh, standing up against a Christian position, which is pro-life. You've got those who are in church who are almost on the side of those people because they perhaps haven't come with the the deeper understanding. The penny hasn't dropped about just what gives human life value and where that comes from in God. Mm. Then you've got a really big chunk in the middle who I suspect would fall into a complacency category before you get those on the other end who are standing on their seats cheering, saying, Sanctity of Life Sunday, this is wonderful. I imagine that the people who are in that big complacency section on the spectrum are going to be the ones that would benefit most from actually having something like this that draws attention to these issues of a pro-life nature. Yeah, well, certainly. um, The the reality is that... um, we don't talk about this often enough and that while the church is the prophetic voice to the nation, uh, the culture has been allowed to drift, allowed by the church to drift into this place where the sanctity of life is a question. Uh, And this is just our opportunity, if not our responsibility, to clear that up. Just like we do with Christmas, it's it's a day which is nationally observed, although it's distinctly Christian. And it's a day which celebrates the gift of Jesus Christ to the world. And it's a day that has a whole lot of inherent meaning to it. Uh, You know, John chapter 3, verse 16, 17 is lovely about the purpose of Jesus coming being to not condemn the world, but to save the world. But John 3, 18 
says those who haven't received him are already condemned. And so there's this this opposite side to the picture, um, which we can't neglect, but just because it's a little bit uncomfortable. And so the same thing is with the gift of the sanctity of life. Um, this is a beautiful gift from God that we can rejoice. And uh, no denomination or political party has a corner on this. This is God's invention. This is the church's authority to communicate and, and lead in the culture. And if there's an uncomfortable side to it, um, you know, well, that's pretty much the entire contents of the Bible. Uh, and if we started tearing out the bits uh, or neglecting the bits that um, could make some people uncomfortable, there wouldn't be much left to talk about on Sunday. Well, that element of the Christian church that sees a proactive opportunity like this, uh, they are going to be so on side and ready to support this because uh, even as you say, uh, Easter, Christmas, well, they're under threat too and there's got to be a battle uh, for reclaiming the Christian foundations for mm. Easter and for Christmas because a lot of Australians just see those as times for a wonderful public holiday. As Christians, we recognise there's a deeper meaning to all of those and so to add a day in the year which is not yet a public holiday who knows for the future but to add a day in the year that's something that is a proactive step forward that uh, can reinforce the idea that of course uh, human life is valuable because we're uh, in, uh, in in light of God's creation so uh, an extra day proactivity a powerful way to actually put a, a time on the calendar that people can rally to yeah, look, I, I don't think there's any suggestion that this should be a public holiday. It's already a Sunday, um, and and the the purpose isn't to get a day off work. The purpose is to bear witness to the nation. Uh, this is the church's role. Now, Ronald Reagan did this in 1984 for his nation. Um, this is old. This isn't an original idea. Um, but rather than waiting for such a national leader in our nation... This is the church's responsibility to do this. This is our, and, and the result doesn't matter. This is our job to lead the culture. And the response is up to the nation. It, like It's on them to respond and agree, hey, life is a gift from God. But how can they agree with it if we're not even telling them? Uh, there's a number of things that happen around the nation. Uh, some of the marches that go on in different uh, capital cities, uh, March for the Babies or March for Life, uh, those happen at different dates in the year. Mm. Uh, it sounds to me like having a particular day that you would have as Sanctity of Life Sunday uh, is an extra gathering point that may actually just unite what everyone's doing, uh, not to diminish those marches. Those marches will continue on, but mm. Uh, to unite what everyone's doing as great work pro-life-wise in the different states to do something that might be a national focal point uh, to bring everyone together and say this is a day we can celebrate. Yeah, look, uh, it would. Uh, one of the suggestions when this was being uh, evolved was, you know, should we put it on one of those march dates? And and the answer was no, because the marches are particularly activist. Uh, and they're looking for legislative outcomes, but the uh, the as well as culture change. But the sanctity of life Sunday has no legislative objectives, no no stated laws that it wants to change. It's just a signal to the culture, a witness to the nation that life is a sacred gift from God. And in that, it is particularly Christian. The marches for life include lots of non-Christian, unchurched people who agree with the, the concept of, of basic human rights for everybody from, from conception, something which was uh, cleared uh, and agreed to by the whole world in 1948. This isn't a new thing. And so there's atheists for life and pagans for life and feminists for life and, and obviously Christians for life, and, and they all participate in the marches for life and, and various um, pro-life activist groups around Australia. But the word sanctity has a theological ob um, implication. And this is the church saying, hey, life is belonging to God. He is the author of this. We are reclaiming the narrative to the nation and to the culture about exactly why and how life is precious and why we're not just another animal that's expendable, why it's not okay to treat a living human as disposable property or, or something that's only got value when it's got a, a social utilitarian use, like a, 
an old person who's sick and infirm is still sacred in the eyes of God. Their life and their dignity and their inherent worth isn't tied up in what they can do for us. Um, and likewise, a, a fetus at the beginning of its life, it's it's got no um, conditions or statuses which alter its value. It is from from um, fertilization till natural death, a gift from God that that is human life. Now, the date that is set for 2020 for Sanctity of Life Sunday, Sunday the 24th of May, uh, is there any particular significance around that date, Dave? Uh, why Saturday the tw- uh, Sunday the 24th of May? Yeah, this is a, an interesting um, thing. There's probably um, no day that's particularly good. Every day's you know already got something on it. Uh, however, again, this was Ronald Reagan's idea, and, and when he instituted it, uh, he did it on the anniversary of the legalization of abortion across America, which was the um, the Supreme Court decision Roe v. Wade. And we don't have a a um, uniform day where that happened in Australia. And so the date that's been chosen is the date that abortion was first legalized in Australia, and uh, that was the twenty sixth of May, nineteen sixty nine. And um, so it's been more than 50 years that um, abortion's been legal anywhere in Australia. Uh, and that happened in the Supreme Court of um, Victoria. And I guess that I guess that's somewhere around the last Sunday in May. So the last Sunday in May, if you said uh, into years that are ahead, uh, it'll be the last Sunday of May. It'll be around about that time and drawing attention to the way that the abortion issue has come to light in Australia. It's the uh, Sunday on or nearest the 26th of May. And because there's 31 days in May, um, sometimes uh, I think like next year, there's going to be another Sunday on the 31st as well as the 24th. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the day when Christians and congregations across Australia can uh, jump on social media and make a public witness and in their churches, uh, in whatever way their liturgy suits their congregation. It could be a, a simple prayer. It could be a whole sermon. It could be a week of prayer and fasting. It could be a, a guest um, sharing uh, from the local pregnancy support centre. Um, and the message is all about compassion and healing and options and support for for women who've had an abortion in the past um, and for women who are facing an unplanned pregnancy in the present. And one of the powerful things is this shouldn't be contained to the four walls of a church. This should be something that the people in the church take into their lives the week before, the week after, and for the rest of the year Whenever they, in their lives, come across somebody that the pastor can't reach, a friend at university, a colleague at work, who's going through or expressing that kind of situation in their life, um, abortion grief or an unplanned pregnancy, that they have the resources and tools to be the hands of Jesus, just caring for those women and offering the, the, the support and the compassion that we need to bring healing to the pain of abortion in our nation, as well as a testimony that will end it and stop it being perpetuated in the future. Well, we all know how powerful it can be when you have a particular day in the year that's designated to draw attention to a particular cause. I mean, just think back for a moment. Uh, Red Nose Day. I mean, remember that was uh, it was just a, such a powerful uh, expression of uh, what it is to deal with uh, cot death. Yeah. Uh, SIDS. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, we're about to have the second test uh, in Sydney. It's going to be the pink ball test, and it's all about uh, breast cancer. Mm. So just having something that is able to be a focal point, that can be a resource, that can educate people, is going to be a very powerful thing. Dave Pello is our guest. I want to invite you to join into our conversation. I want to open our talk back line. 1-800-316-316. What's your immediate reaction to the idea that there could be a day called Sanctity of Life Sunday on the 24th of May next year? Is that something that strikes a chord with you? Do you think your church would pick that up in a significant way and draw attention to it? Why don't you be a part of our conversation today? 1-800-316-316. And you can also leave a note on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash vision radio. Uh, Dave Pellow's our guest. We'll continue talking some more about this in just a few moments. This is 2020 with Neil Johnson, helping you make sense of life, culture and current events from a biblical perspective. 2020 on Vision. 
Dave Pello is our guest this hour. He's the founder of the Church and State Summits. We'll talk about those a little too, but he's also an avid pro-life advocate. And today we're talking through the issues around the designation of Sunday the 24th of May next year as Sanctity of Life Sunday, an opportunity for individual Christians and for groups of people in churches uh, to draw attention to the value of human life under God. Uh, Interesting that some people might say, uh, you know, well, here you are doing something divisive again. Uh, But there's (laughs) there's something here, uh, Dave, to draw attention to, and that would be and I mentioned uh, SIDS, uh, Red Nose Day, and I mentioned the, the pink test that's coming up, drawing attention to issues of uh, breast cancer. Uh, but interestingly, if we looked at statistics, the leading cause of death in Australia is not cancer, it's not heart disease, it's abortion. Yeah, that's right. The Australian Bureau of Statistics doesn't actually list it as a cause of death. Um, so... Uh, they they won't agree that it's the leading cause of death. But if you took their top three leading causes of death, which is dementia, heart disease, and all the cancers combined, uh, then you still wouldn't have the same number of deaths per year as we currently uh, achieve in our abortion clinics. Uh, we're taking calls 1-800-316-316. Your thoughts on a Sanctity of Life Sunday for next year on the 24th of May. We're taking calls 1-800-316-316. Let's hear from Emma. Emma, welcome along. Hello, Emma, have we got you? Emma, you might like to call us back on 1-800-316-316. We've lost you there. 1-800-316-316 to be part of our conversation. How do you think pastors and priests are going to think about the idea of a Sanctity of Life Sunday, Dave? Because uh, some churches are stronger on pro-life issues than others. Well, this is again, this has been going for decades in America, and it's an annual opportunity for the church to... Uh, to celebrate the gift of life, the gift of human life from God and its sacredness. It's a, it's a day uh, every year for the church to um, commemorate those lives lost to abortion, and it's a day to commit ourselves to defending life. Um, I, I think this is wonderfully reflective of the spirit of Messiah. He is the author of life. Uh, he's the defender of life. And uh, when he was divisive um, amongst the, the culture of his day, it was um, in, in um, a stand against the oppression um, of the vulnerable, the defenseless, and those people who were without power. And there's probably no more innocent uh, or defenseless or powerless person than uh, the pre-born child and the target of the uh, abortionists' um, instruments. Okay, I think we've got to uh, call a... It's Granville in WA. Hello, Granville. Welcome along. Oh, good morning, Neil. Uh, thanks for uh, the opportunity to talk to you about this sanctity of life. And I feel very strongly for this as a Christian that we're all created in God's image. Our lives really are not our own. They belong to Jesus Christ. Therefore, we've got to be very conscious of, of our lives and the preciousness of them and the fact that they've been granted to us by God, by Jesus So I'm all for this, and I think it's a really good idea of having that Sunday in May when people can get together and openly uh, discuss and put this this view forward, the sanctity of life. And I just heard what you're talking about, abortion, and the the amount of people who died of loss through abortion. I didn't realize it was so high, you know. So I think it's so important to uh, make a stand and to discuss it and uh, make people more aware of it. Uh, You know, we all need to be aware of that. Our lives are not our own. We've been created in God's image, and ultimately we're responsible to Jesus Christ. Therefore, we've got to protect and and really value life, very much so. Good thoughts, Granville. A thought or two from Dave Pello. Well, it is a shock to a lot of people that the numbers are so high. Um, you know, Conservatively, it's at least 80,000 people a year, and estimates... Um, aren't data isn't well kept in Australia. It's something we should change. But the estimates are 82 to 100,000 people and possibly more. But one of the statistics that we can change to radically reduce this loss of life, this tragic loss of innocent life in our nation, is that 70% of women who have had an abortion 
would have made a different choice if only they had have known there was one person who would support them. And that's something the church can practically do. Just words of encouragement, congratulations in any circumstance. And, and just that we're here with you. You won't be doing this alone. We could save 70,000 lives a year just by the church bearing this witness to the nation. Uh, Granville, thank you so much for your call. Our talk back line is open on 1-800-316-316. Interesting, isn't it, that sometimes when people think of the church having a pro-life stand, which puts it at loggerheads with this pro-choice abortion agenda, that somehow or other the church is being some sort of an ogre and, uh, and wanting the worst thing for women. In actual fact, the church's heart is for the best for women and for their babies. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, the, the the endless amounts of anecdotes uh, about abortion, grief, and and regret are, are just uh, heartbreaking. And um, the church shouldn't be standing in condemnation of of any individual, um, but rather it's it's the compassion for the woman and the child, and the the destruction on the whole family, the father, the the grandparents, the generations lost. Um, it, it's you know the, this is a toxic toxic cancer on our society and on the individuals in it. I mean, you will have a woman coming into a pregnancy counselling centre decades after she's had an abortion um, with, with um, PTSD from abortion grief, and she's never told anybody in her whole life because society has told her she is silly for mourning that child because it wasn't really a baby or or she had every right it was empowering it was some other feminist lie about about how she has no reason to grieve and so she's denied herself even the opportunity to grieve and and get ca- counseling and therapy for this um, trauma in her life and and so we need to if we care for women we have to correct this and say that's normal and you need counseling and you need healing and you need forgiveness And we would love to be part of that journey for you. You know, the sort of anecdote that's very, very uh, significant, uh, the idea that a mother who has had abortions and eventually she has children and uh, those children grow up and there's a family around the table, but there's always a seat that's empty and the regret that follows uh, that says there should have been a little life that was in that seat. And the regret and the remorse, as you say, a powerful thing that that women uh, sometimes are not aware of when they're going through that counselling that says you should have an abortion. Yeah, it's... It's 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 a a truly tragic loss, and uh, and the abortion industry is frantic to deny that there's any such thing as abortion grief, or that if there is, it's exceptionally rare. Um, but you know what? There's absolutely no warning for women before they have an abortion. It's incredibly easy, um, and and this is one of the things that we have to be. It's not about controlling a woman. It's about loving uh, a woman and making sure that she has the the opportunity to make informed choices and have full support. We're about to go to Vision National News and continuing our conversation after the news. Uh, You're invited to be a part of our conversation, 1-800-316-316. We're talking about a Sanctity of Life Sunday on the 24th of May next year. Dave Pellow is our guest. We'll continue our conversation after the news. This is 2020 with Neil Johnson, helping you make sense of life, culture and current events from a biblical perspective. Wonderful to have you with us. It is the Wednesday edition of 2020 and our talkback line is open. 1-800-316-316 to join in our conversation today. If you are just joining us, we're talking about a new initiative to have a Sanctity of Life Sunday in Australia and a date designated the 24th of May next year. Now, I wonder whether you're excited about that. How do you think that will fly with Aussies, uh, with Christians, with churches and with denominations? Well, uh, this new initiative today, we're talking about it. It's likely to be both controversial and, importantly, a rallying point for people who are horrified by the open season on babies in the womb. 
Well, next year, expect a day on the calendar called Sanctity of Life Sunday. It's an initiative that seeks to resource churches and Christians all over the nation to lead a transformation of the culture into one which affirms the sanctity of life and supports national leaders who are publicly doing so. Now, Sanctity of Life Sunday would be a national day for God's people to bear witness that life is a sacred gift from God. It's a day that would focus on forgiveness and healing for past abortions and to promote community resources supporting women facing an unplanned pregnancy. So we're talking about Sanctity of Life Sunday with our special guest, Dave Pello, the founder of the Church and State Summits and an avid pro-life advocate. Uh, Dave, there's been a call or two that came through from listeners who want wanting to, uh, to speak live on the air. Uh, one of them saying, uh, well, it's all very well to have a specific day in the year when you might designate that as Sanctity of Life Sunday, but really we need to be drawing attention to this every day of the year. What are your thoughts for that, listener? Yeah, absolutely. Um, th- that's uh, very, very true. Uh, and yet the reality is that there's a, a lot of um, Christian leaders and Christians in general out there who don't know how. And what they need is the help to do that. And this day is a, a focal point um, and a resource for people to say, this is how. This is how. And so the website, sanctityoflifesunday.com.au, uh, already has some resources from various denominations, um, Salvation Army, uh, so the Orthodox Church of America, um, Catholics, Presbyterians. And um, there's something for everybody. This is a universal theological constant. This is the un, unvarying word of God. And, and so this is something that we can all do. But uh, again, because people are rightly sensitive about not causing more harm, um, there's a reticence to talk about this too often. And, um, you know, that's great. But we shouldn't either be too extreme and, and too bombastic about it, nor should we be too silent and too apathetic about it. And that's what that caller was saying. And, and so what Sanctity of Life Sunday is uh, is doing is resourcing um, churches, congregations, ministers, and and grassroots Christians to have the resources to have this conversation, to draw awareness to the resources that are in the community, pregnancy support centres, pregnancy counselling centres, um, unplanned pregnancies, and and just saying these conversations when we start having them will proactively send a message to the congregation and to the community. Uh, that you're not going to get condemnation here. You're going to get support and congratulations. And uh, and that will change uh, what is one of the primary driving factors for a lot of especially young women making an abortion choice, and that is fear. And if we can deal with that with love and compassion... Um, we can actually save a lot of lives. 1-800-316-316 to join in our talkback conversation. You can also leave a comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash vision radio. And and, uh, something of the other caller that called through during the news didn't want to go to air. And you can understand this because Mm. uh, reflecting their own story of being a young woman raised in a Christian home and then fell pregnant outside of wedlock and found herself in the position where she's at the abortion clinic. And uh, as I understand the story, even a friend of hers also raised in a Christian home going through the same process. So this idea of what happens within the home life of a Christian who falls pregnant outside of wedlock and sometimes the stigma that's attached to that because the church talks about you know, uh, saving yourself for marriage. Uh, these sorts of issues are really important ones to discuss, Dave. They are, and that's why we need to have these conversations in our congregations and in our homes proactively so that when there's no heat, there's no surprise, um, your responses and your reactions can be um, more deliberate and intentional, intentionally caring, intentionally compassionate, um, and and just telling the truth about both fetal development, um, the harms of abortion, and how you would respond if that came up. Uh, and that kind of preemptive uh, compassion 
won't teach a child to be promiscuous. It'll teach a child to be safe and not uh, respond in fear of their parents. And I suspect a day like Sanctity of Life Sunday then takes this whole issue of being pro-life, not just in a uh, political realm, uh, not just in what your church might teach theologically about the value of human life, but uh, when you've got a particular day that's set aside like this, uh, you've got this coming straight into the very family home where it's able to be discussed around the table when your children are in those formative childhood, uh, tween age and into teenage years where Mm. you can talk about uh, these elements of what's important about what's valuable in life. Uh, It's a day that takes it not just into the the stratosphere of politics and ethics, but brings it right around the family dinner table. Yeah, no, it is. um, My my daughter's old enough to have this conversation, well and truly old enough. And, um, and, you know, she had some friends around and and they were asking questions and um, they watched some videos on YouTube from a website called abortionprocedures.com and their responses were shock and horror. They had no idea what an abortion was. And it's, I mean, if, if we believe the dominant narrative out there, it's just a medical procedure. And they're tastefully done. Animations, not gross or gory or gratuitous, uh, but they're informative and educational, and uh, no woman watching that would, in their right mind, want to have an abortion. one 316 we'll take another call or two in just a few moments, but I do want to ask you, uh, with uh, being the first Sanctity of Life Sunday uh, next year, on the 24th of May, uh, there's a movement there to have churches endorse the Sanctity of Life Sunday and there are some denominations that are leading the way here uh, but I imagine that uh, you'd like to see some numbers on the registration there. I mean, you know, just to formally say, yes, we're supporting this. Uh, what are your aspirations for uh, congregations to be on board with you? Well, wouldn't it be wonderful for the first Sanctity of Life Sunday in Australia to have overwhelming participation, a a light set on top of the hill so bright that the world can't ignore it, shining into the darkness. If there was, and how easy would it be to get over a thousand congregations? Now, I'm sure there'll be plenty participating, but we need them to add their name to the list um, so that it can be official and there can be a, a counting of these voices uh, speaking into the darkness. Uh, interestingly, uh, people listening around Australia today in the 720 uh, cities, towns and communities all around the country, uh, no doubt uh, people listening to our conversation are coming from more than a 1,000 congregations. And right. so uh, uh, you could have that 1,000 if those listening to our conversation today simply spoke to their pastor and said, how about we get on board with this and uh, we put our name to it and uh, we'll get the resources that are needed to, to just draw attention to this important issue in our church. Uh, no doubt that would be a real really great start for uh, Sanctity of Life Sunday. Two churches, two congregations uh, in every town listening to this program uh, would um, just make a huge witness to the nation and um, and start to create an environment where uh, the popular sentiment changes. And when the popular sentiment changes, suddenly the politicians won't need to be so courageous to step out and say, let's make this a national day officially. Uh, so every pastor can find information at sanctityoflifesunday.com.au and uh, just click on the page, get involved. Uh, one caller who just called through who suggested using the pro-life precious feet lapel pins as a conversation starter. Thank you so much to that caller who called through with that suggestion. I reckon Another that's one. a great idea. And I think churches should actually have these for sale on Sanctity of Life Sunday and donate the profits or, or you know, in some way use it as a fundraiser for the local pregnancy resource centre because the government in Australia only funds the killing of babies. We don't fund support for pregnant women with an unplanned pregnancy. And so it's actually cheaper and easier to destroy life in Australia. And so we need to be part of that solution as well.
Well, what a powerful thought because so many cities and towns around the nation are going to have pregnancy support services active within the town, yep. uh, but likely to be severely under-resourced, uh, usually run by people who are wonderfully hearted volunteers yeah. and usually in facilities that we might in the 21st century think are not quite up to the sort of standard that people expect. And so the idea of using that as a fundraiser to be able to resource a pregnancy help centre in your town, yeah. well, that's just got to be a great thing to be aspiring to. It's probably worth mentioning here that uh, any person listening uh, now who who needs those services uh, and to point those services to every congregation participating on Sanctity of Life Sunday, they're listed on the Sanctity of Life Sunday website. Uh, you just click on the page Community, and you'll find there both uh, pregnancy support services as well as abortion counselling services. I want to give some special honour here to the Presbyterian Church, because as I understand it, as a denomination, the Presbyterians are right behind Sanctity of Life Sunday. Uh, give us a little insight into how their support has come about, Dave. Yeah, well, uh, Peter Barnes is uh, the uh, new, I think, chairperson is the right uh, title for his, his role, but as a denomination across Australia, um, they've they've uh, come on board and said, yeah, right across Australia, we're going to be the first denomination to um, enthusiastically be part of this prophetic voice to the nation. Um, so his, his uh, testimony, which is on the website, um, says, God is the creator of the whole universe and it in turn reflects his glory. However, he created human beings in his own image. In order to save his people, the Son of God first became an embryo in Mary's womb. God's creation and recreation gives us every reason to stand against the death squads and in favor of life from conception onwards. Christians believe that God is the creator of all life and that human life is especially precious since it's created in the image of God. Clearly, such a view of life is under assault today. For the sake of the unborn, let us fast and pray. That's a great witness to lead. Let's take another call. Robin is on the line from Western Australia. Hi, Robin. Welcome. Oh, hello. Um, I've been listening to your program and um, and it's all, you know, really great that um, women are being supported, you know, prior to having abortion. But what about all the women that have had abortions? Where do they go? Uh, that's a good uh, thought because uh, I think this is an under-resourced uh, a, a capability that uh, many churches need to be contemplating. Uh, but uh, your thoughts here, Dave Pello, for uh, for what happens for those women who have who are suffering this sort of post-abortion, and sometimes people talk about it even in the realms of PTSD, but what are your thoughts here? Look, absolutely. Sanctity of Life Sunday is very concerned uh, about both sides, both before and after the abortion. So uh, we, we've got the victims of abortion, and then we've got abortion-vulnerable women, women who are facing an unplanned pregnancy. And... Look, the, the statistics in Australia are, again, shocking. Uh, the average listener may not know that as many as one in three women under the age of 30 have had an abortion. Uh, that's a lot of people that you're going to go past on the road today, a lot of people in the shopping centre, and a lot of people in your church have had an abortion. And they need counselling. They need um, healing. They need to experience forgiveness for themselves and forgiveness by God for, for the trauma that they've experienced and been a part of. And a lot of women uh, have been coerced into this and not actually willingly participated at all. There's a lot of injury to the souls of women in Australia. Sanctity of Life Sunday is a resource for churches to be part of the ministry to, to those women who, haven't had, who have had an abortion in the past. Robin, while we've got you on the line, what else is going through your heart and mind as you're listening into the conversation we're having today? And, and uh, you know, maybe there are those who are close to you that, uh, you know, have well, gone through yeah. these sorts of things. How are you feeling about the idea of a Sanctity of Life Sunday? Well, I think that's a wonderful thing, um, but I'm still concerned about all the women that have had abortions. I had an abortion um, before I became a Christian, and it was what led me to become a Christian. Wow. Um, I remember just having, you know, five years after I had that abortion, um, in total torment. Mm. And um, I didn't know God. Um, he was a distant 
God. And um, But I was led to read a book um, by uh, Jackie Pullinger, um, Chasing the Dragon. And in that, that's where I found Jesus. That's where I found forgiveness. Awesome. I'm so and, sorry for um, your loss, Robin. Yeah, I mean, it was many years ago now. And I mean, I'm, I, I'm married and I've got three, I had three children and it was going to be my fourth. And I didn't get the support of, you know, anybody, not even my doctor. He wow. just, you know, just wrote out the address. I went there for help and, you know, there was no one that gave me the support that I needed. I didn't want to do mm. it. And yet I went through with it. And it's the biggest regret of my life. Mm. And I just think about all the women. I mean, I didn't know God then. And, and I didn't wasn't a church person. I was not raised a Christian. Um but I know the, you know, the forgiveness of God and the love of God. And um, I mean, I do go to church now. And um, I just think about all the women out there who have had an abortion. I don't, I don't know if they would go to a church. You know, I mean, I guess God knows their heart, and it's when they are, you know, searching for truth that He finds them. Like they, he did me. Um, but I just think about all the women. Um, yeah. Interesting, as you share those things, Robin, those women out there who are not Christian, don't go to church, who have gone through abortion, would they ever go to church? I suspect they would be a part of a group where women who were sharing their uh, intimate uh, past and their own issues around abortion, uh, they would Mm. be attracted to that. And that may well be a place uh, where they can be connected to God. But it's kind of bringing up that conversation, isn't it? Because it's kind of a a thing that you're ashamed about and you don't want to talk about it, even sometimes with close friends. Yeah, It's very difficult, you know. It's it's like creating an awareness for those women who have had abortions to be able to come to a safe zone, to be able to share. I mean, I went to a Christian counsellor, didn't get even the counselling I needed when, Mm. when I was going through that torment. And um, I didn't know, you know, they didn't tell me about God and Jesus and forgiveness. I mean, it was a, probably a nominal Christian kind of service. Yeah. But, what we will achieve know, with Sanctity of Life Sunday is a growing awareness, a growing education and a growing uh, empowerment of every Christian to be an agent of healing and forgiveness and information so that there will be more and more people uh, going out into the world, the workplaces, outside of the church, uh, university campuses, places where women uh, may be considering an abortion or disclosing that they've had an abortion. And you might be that one person who that lady will tell in her whole life. And our goal uh, with Sanctity of Life Sunday is to empower the church, to empower the people to to be ministers of, of healing and reconciliation um, when that happens, and uh, and we should do everything within our power to get better and better at doing that. Robin from WA, thank you so much for calling in and to sharing those deeper issues of your own heart. Mm. And uh, my prayer for you, Robin, is that God will just take you from strength to strength and that uh, all of those experiences that you've had will be valuable as you share those with other women within your own circle of influence. Uh, God's richest blessing on you, Robin. Uh, one thing just quickly to uh, to draw attention to, and uh, while we're talking about women outside of the church, uh, not likely to come to church because sometimes when we start to talk about pro-life issues, uh, even when we might mention it, Sanctity of Life Sunday, people will always have this thing that we have to break through. It's like a ceiling that's uh, that's over us. So this idea that people feel as though whenever the church speaks about pro-life issues, that it's coming from a position of condemnation. Something that has to be turned around. And no doubt, with the foundation of a Sanctity of Life Sunday, it creates a wonderful opportunity, Dave. Yeah, definitely. Look, there's a, there's a myth in the world that's perpetuated, uh, and it's fluffy, feel-good, um, f- fake pop psychology. You're okay, I'm okay. And, and the message of the Bible is we're not okay. We all need a saviour. We all are on a journey from from sinners like filthy rags to sanctification towards being like Jesus. And and so that can feel like a, a message of condemnation. And to be sure, 
the church is very uh, guilty of immaturity in communicating that, um, unsophistication in communicating that, and being very clumsy and, and bruising in, in saying uh, we are sinners in need of a saviour. Uh, but this is the opportunity to get better at doing that. Dave, we are running out of time. I do want to mention the Church and State Summit, another one coming up in the new year. Undoubtedly, it'll be a wonderful springboard too to be talking about Sanctity of Life Sunday when the Church and State Summit rolls around. Uh, but the Church and State Summit, uh, early next year, I imagine, uh, is it February? The last uh, weekend of February, every uh, year. Last weekend in February. And uh, you'd be encouraging people, no doubt, uh, to become aware. And what happens is people become very politically aware and uh, they have a wonderful appreciation of what sort of Christian foundation affects the way we think about the people who are legislating all of these things in our nation. So what's your encouragement for people to uh, get on board with Church and State Summit next year? Well, the theme in uh, February is going to be intervene. Uh, and this is a command we see in Scripture and as we see a model in, in Jesus intervening in the injustice and oppression that we see around us like the good samaritan uh, he saw his neighbor beat up and in desperate need on the side of the road he didn't pray for him he intervened in the situation inserted himself into the solution uh, we've got amazing speakers from around australia and even internationally with dr michael brown uh, coming to to share with us how we can be part of that solution for a, a lost and hurting world in a very practical way uh, now, the good news is that the Church and State Summit in 2020 is going to be in Auckland, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. Uh, and so the early bird tickets, I think there's only 20 early bird tickets left for the Brisbane Summit. Um, and, um, and when they're gone, they're gone. But uh, um, there's uh, still going to be a, a special rate after the new year. And um, the website for that is churchandstate.com.au. And while we're talking websites, there is a website for Sanctity of Life Sunday. And uh, let me point people to that, sanctityoflifesunday.com.au. sanctityoflifesunday.com.au. And uh, let me also mention the Pillow Talk website, pillowtalk.com. And uh, you're doing some wonderful work uh, with uh, interview guests. Uh, you have a wonderful online ministry that uh, you're leading there, Dave. So uh, uh, pointing people to pillowtalk.com to get the sorts of commentary that you're hearing today but across a really broad range of issues that Dave talks about uh, frequently. Dave, uh, wonderful getting your insights once again today. I want to thank you so much for being part of 2020. Thanks, Neil.